this week on One Devotion. We go backstage as Turkish Airlines Euroleague stars shop and their skills en route to opening day. We relive how some of the Euroleague stars spent the summer chasing medals. Follow along as the Euroleague's defending champs shipped off to South America. And marvel at this hometown club toasting a true world basketball icon. As the build up to the Turkish Airlines Euroleague season continues, we took a trip to Istanbul to see how the preparation for some of the teams is progressing. On the Asian side of Turkey's biggest city, six teams welcomed us with open arms, and we got feedback from a selection of players and coaches who will have a major impact in the 2014-15 season. Starting with one of the most respected names in the game and the most successful coach in the history of the Euroleague, Jelko Obradovic, who enters his second season on the bench of Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul. Being granted access to one of King Obradovich's training sessions is a rare privilege, even though no real secrets were revealed after the session was over by the captain of Fenerbahce. Regular practices, you know, morning liftings and uh, some 5 on 0 stuff and some, I don't know, 1 on 1, 2 on 2, that kind of drills. In the evening is more tactics, preparation for the season, set plays, defensive plays. And also we have some, a lot of meetings, videos, preparing what, what we should we do better. For those who have just arrived on the Bosphorus, Coach Obradovic's training regimen is both very welcome and particularly intense. This season is definitely the toughest part of the season. And, uh, you know, we get right to it, man. This is probably the hardest working place that I've been, uh, hands down. When I really start to get back into basketball mode, uh, I just go hard. You know, I go 110% doing everything, so um, it doesn't take me too long because I'm, you know, really hard on myself about things. Until I play how I feel like I should play, until I work, until I feel like my body is how it should be, you know, I won't stop. You know, we call it having a chip on your shoulder. Olympiakos Pireos also landed in Istanbul for a training camp where a new face, point guard Oliver Lafayette, is hoping to become a key figure in coach Georgos Bartzokas' team. Just uh, keep my shot crisp. Working on shots I take in the game. We got a real good leader. Been playing in the Europe League for a long time. Uh, and Spanulis. And um, he makes sure everybody gets some good, everybody get good shots. As you can see, I don't miss that much. This is also a good time for Oliver to concentrate on the pick and roll. If you jab right, your defender will move over. And when you come up to pick and roll, you're looking for your big on the roll pass. If you don't have to build a roll pass, you got the jump shot or you got the man all the way in the corner. Basic pick and roll. Yeah. On the baseline, on the corner. If your man plays blue, you want to dribble down, take two dribbles down, look for your big across the pass back. If you pass it back for your big, you want the handoff to come and you have an easy 45 jumper or pass back to the big man. And that's your basic pick and roll in preseason. That's what you work on every day in preseason. The Reds have a squad full of veterans from Spanulis to Parentesis. But at this stage of the season, the experience of Andreas, the fitness coach, is what dominates the sessions. Andreas takes care of the players' muscles and has been nurturing the star of the team since his early days as a professional. Spanulis is uh, 15 years together. A very strong uh, guy and a very strong mentally guy. 
stretching the practice is very important for uh, basketball. For uh, it's different stretching before practice. In preparation, uh, stretching is dynamic flexibility. And after a practice, it's static stretching for a relaxed uh, muscular. Most teams began their training regimes in early August. And by the time the season starts, we'll have gone through two months of intense work without a break, even if you are at home like Anadolu FS. We spent uh, about three weeks in Slovenia for training camp in Kranska Gora, uh, kind of working, just getting the team used to everything. Um, we've had some tough practices, some, some lighter practices, kind of typical preseason stuff, and then just waiting for you know, all the guys to get back from the World Cup, get our team together, and now it's kind of trying to get everyone on the same page, everybody's starting to work together. As teams strive to progress in Istanbul, we met a few of the new faces of the upcoming EuroLeague season. One of these was the new playmaker of Unicaja Malaga, Stefan Markovic. It's a new challenge for me in my career, so uh, I tried to adapt as soon as possible to, this, to that level of playing basketball. I don't like so much running, you know, I like more practicing, you know, competing, pile fire, that type of you know, practice, so I'm more for that. No improvement was too mundane as he prepared for his EuroLeague debut. During the preseason, I work on my free throw shoot, so, you know, basically I change, I change my rhythm, you know, I change some motion, and I think it's helped me. Before it was like, low, but now I think I'm increasing the, the percentage of free throws, so I, I pay attention more on that details. The training camp is also a chance for the newcomers to get to know their teammates, and Istanbul proved an excellent occasion for Kervena Zvezda Telecom Belgrade's newest backcourt boss to find his feet. Every team that I've been on, I mean, has been, have worked hard in the preseason uh, with two a days, just preparing for, for, for a long year. I mean, night practice is a lot of competition. It's a lot of, it's a lot of contact, uh, five on five, four on four, three on two, four on threes. I mean, it's a lot of situational things. And in the morning situations are sometimes lifting weights, um, shooting, working on ball handling. It's more individual. This is the moment when a team really bonds and gels. It helps living in the same hotel and spending every day in each other's presence. Unless there are special circumstances, as happened in the Seska Moscow camp. Now I got one daughter, my first one, and it's great. It's just amazing. I left the team on Monday after we arrived in Istanbul and spent two, two days with, with my girlfriend and, and the baby. And so while Nando was celebrating the birth of his daughter Lola, his teammates carried on under the guidance of a new coach. It was good to see the progress. It was good to see that we hustle and we go for nobody's ball and not, that nobody's ball is our ball. Uh, it, it's good to see that you drive and kick, we have this. And, uh, we got to be better from practice to practice, from game to game. Let's go. Bring it in. A good one. Moskva. Ceska. Everybody get a ball. Let's go right layups. When they come from weights, we, we keep half court. Then we bring him together. We got one court up and second court. And then I'm going to bring him immediately to the, to the, to the five on five. New players, new coach, new ideas for the Moscow-based team. And the captain, Andrei Voroncevic, looks to be in great shape already. He and the rest of the players are desperate to get back to competitive basketball, and there isn't long to go now. It's like two months without basketball. I make some shots on my country house, I have a basket. I make some dribble, make some stuff on my body, like stomach, back, some shooting drills. And of course, when you start playing basketball, it's your life. 
After hard practice or after hard minutes in the game, you just stay concentrated and to be focused. Usually I just make a few dribbles, make a hard breathe. We try to relax. And now we're working rebound and passing. <laughs> if my opponent cannot score, I rebound all day. Now we just enjoy to see each other, to stay together. Long time we don't stay together, now we're together. Everybody with a good mood. And we just go to take the SUM championship. Just try to force to yourself, like in the game, try to be faster. Wide open. Usually my guys joke on me, because I'm saying every time, wide open. Wide open, make some spot shots from the corner. Very important when you spread the floor. Your guys penetrate and test you, you need to score. Because they believe in your shot. First of all, you need to believe in yourself. And Pre-season is not just about hard work, there are also plenty of great events. Last month, the USA won the World Cup in Spain, defeating Serbia, the biggest surprise of the tournament, in the final. That silver medal highlighted a number of rising stars. One of them was Kirvena Zvezda Telekom Belgrade's Nikola Kalinic, who astonished everybody with his unbelievable dunk against Greece. Well, you see what's happening with that seed, so everybody is, you know, making complaints about that. We didn't care about that. We, we believe in ourselves and we know, we knew that we are good and we show that today, you know, it doesn't matter if we are first or fourth, we always go and win. That's our mentality, that's Serbian mentality and, you know, that's most important. The World Cup was a great experience, even for those who came up just short of a medal, like Turkey's Emir Prelzic. It was a great experience for us because it was new team, new coach, and we were trying to just make out of the first round, but we, we, we went in top eight teams in, in the world. It was really a nice feeling after, after to make that two threes in the last 40 seconds for the, to win the game, and everybody was calling me, they were, I mean, congratulating me, and it was really a great thing. After we won that Australia game, we wanted to win also against Lithuania, but we didn't have luck. We, we didn't play a good second half, but in the end, when you, when you finish everything, we were, we were happy with our results. It was also an opportunity for rising stars like Croatia's Dario Saric of Anadolu FS Istanbul to measure themselves against legends. The World Cup helped me uh, so much because I was playing against like Skola, uh, Andrei Blace, and a lot of many Gurk, uh, good players. And this is a big experience for me and uh, easier way to play uh, on one another level like EuroLeague. It is a special feeling to play for your national team, as Unikaha Malaga forward Mindaugas Kuzminskas of Lithuania said. I'm glad that, that I'm able to play for my national team because you know, I'm a patriot of my country. And especially when you're playing abroad, you, you know, you're playing in Lithuania, you're hearing your country's anthem before the game, everything. Of course, the Lithuanian national team, we're playing for free. So, you know, you're playing just from the heart, you're going, practice hard, and you know that nobody pays for you for that. You just, you just do for, for your country to, 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 to make your country's name f as famous as possible in the world, especially in Lithuania, you know, basketball is sports number one, and I think it's, it's, it's one of the sports who is making Lithuania famous in the world. Finally, a special dedication goes out to Serbia and to their coach, and we'll let another Unikaha Malaga player, Stefan Markovic, do the honours. 
it, it was great, you know, because first of all, nobody expect, expect uh, that result from us, you know. Uh, the people in Serbia also and the basketball world uh, didn't give us a chance, you know. Some of them doubt that we can make the first group, you know, everything, but we, we keep fighting and uh, coach Sasha Djordjevic, he believed in us from the first day. He put, uh, he put that uh, winning spirit in uh, all of us and I think the result is great, you know. No sooner had the World Cup ended than Euroleague teams were making tracks for distant lands themselves, with Euroleague champion Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv travelling halfway across the globe to Brazil to take part in the 2014 Intercontinental Cup. The HSBC Arena in Rio de Janeiro was overflowing for Maccabi's two games in three days against Flamengo, the host club, and reigning 2014 FIBA Liga de las Americas champions. On the eve of the weekend, FIBA and Euroleague basketball celebrated the tournament's second consecutive staging after it had disappeared for almost two decades. Maccabi rallied to win the opening game by a three-point margin, but it wasn't enough to lift the trophy two days later, as Flamengo used its home court advantage to become just the fifth South American winner in 27 total editions of the Intercontinental Cup. One of the players who impressed the most was new arrival Jeremy Pargo, Maccabi's leading scorer for the weekend. We have to focus on being a team and winning those games. You know, we had an opportunity to win that game late in that game, and uh, we got to work on those things and clean them up for the future. Despite the result, promoting EuroLeague basketball made Maccabi players proud. You know, the atmosphere is great. You know, they, they have a, a big soccer club that supports the basketball team too. So, you know, those fans come out, you know, through thick and thin. And, uh, you know, it was a great atmosphere to play in. And uh, I was able to see... You know that, you know, there's, there's good basketball being played, you know, everywhere. It was a positive experience also for the team's new head coach, Guy Goodies. Well, again, congratulations for Flamengo for a great game. And uh, we're going to learn from that. I was uh, very proud to see, first of all, uh, fans, Israeli fans, Maccabi Tel Aviv fans uh, that uh, came from far and came uh, to see our game and support us. The Intercontinental Cup was the first stop on the EuroLeague Basketball World Tour, with Maccabi jetting off next to games in the United States, while FC Barcelona hit the road to Asia. More on their travels next week. While some toured the world and others crisscrossed Europe, all 24 EuroLeague teams devoted one day during pre-season to communicating through the media to the fans their excitement about the new season. Arriving at a moment when every team is a potential champion, the annual right of media day generated optimism wherever it touches down. In close-up interviews, several players from each team tell about their lives on and off the court, some revealing remarkable talents even their teammates didn't know they had. Specially selected players subjected to a EuroLeague trivia quiz were sometimes left scratching their heads for the answers. 385. Others who were quizzed about their teammates were only too happy to dish the dirt. <laughs> DMT is the best singer. He's always singing Greek music, you know. When in the locker room, even if the, even if the radio's not on, he's always singing something. Uh, but he doesn't sound bad. Each and every EuroLeague player gets his turn in the spotlight for his official portraits of the season, and more than one makes it clear that he doesn't mind striking a pose. Not even head coaches are immune to having some fun in front of the cameras. 
whether they are demonstrating trick shots, doing what no coach would let them do on court, or showing off their hobbies, the collective message is the same. I hope you guys are ready this year. Turkish Airlines Euro League Basketball is going to be an awesome season. I know we're ready here at Olympia Milano, so make sure you follow us. For eight teams with aspirations to join the European elite, the end of September was already time for some serious basketball. The Turkish Airlines Euro League qualifying rounds brought eight teams to Ostend, Belgium, to wage four days' worth of battles that would let one, and only one of them, become the 24th and final EuroLeague team this season. Every game in the qualifying rounds is a do-or-die battle, so the key to survival was clear, arrive as close as possible to mid-season form. Opening night had a French flair as both Strasbourg and Asvel lyon Villeurbanne hit the ground running with big victories. A day later, it was former Euro Cup champs Onyx Kazan of Russia and Hapoel Jerusalem working hard to keep their EuroLeague hopes alive. Asvel stayed on form the third night as Taurine Green paced an offensive onslaught. While Onyx followed the hot hand of former EuroLeague champ Nikos Zizis to a comeback win. It all came down to Friday and another thriller. Asvel ran ahead by 19 points after half-time, but Unix would not be denied and took flight behind James White and Keith Langford to a coveted pace in the EuroLeague. It was very hard the fact that to, to win three, no, three knockout games in three days. So it was a very hard week, uh, but we were able to, to accomplish our goal. I think, uh, above all, we, we, we didn't let down ourselves. Um, we kept on playing. We knew that Asvel played an amazing first half, also by taking advantage of our mistakes, but uh, they were uh, very efficient. Uh, they scored 53 points. I think the most important thing is that in the locker room, coach emphasized what we wanted to change and uh, kept us calm. First of all, and then uh, the fact that we didn't, uh, uh, let's say, let down on ourselves and we kept on playing. I think we made some great defensive um, stops, uh, and that was the most important thing that we changed the rhythm of the game from defense. And then uh, in our offense, the fact that we have a, a lot of talent and we have many players that can score the ball, everything came easier you know, for ourselves. But the most important, I think, was defense and the psychological part, that uh, uh, we didn't quit, but uh, we kept believing in ourselves and kept playing the game. While others toured the world, one of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague's most renowned clubs lived its shining moment of the preseason right at home, in the friendly confines of its state-of-the-art arena. The occasion of its 70th anniversary was more than enough reason for Zalgiris Kaunas to throw a party that won't be forgotten soon in Lithuania's second largest city. A sold-out Zalgirio Arena was transformed into a 3D video screen and interactive stage where the most glorious moments in the history of the team were depicted in uniformly fascinating fashion. Stuntmen, actors, cheerleaders, mascots, singers, ballers and the fans themselves all contributed to the resounding success of the 70th anniversary event, which was attended by many of important basketball figures of the team's illustrious past, like former coach Jonas Kauslauskas and a player on his 1999 EuroLeague champion team, Saulio Stombergas. But 
evening's spectacular anniversary celebration was built around a most historic moment in itself, as Lithuanian and world basketball icon Arvidas Sabonis became the first Zalgiris player ever to have his jersey retired. His number 11 rose majestically to the arena ceiling as a packed house of more than 15,000 fans remained on its feet to honour the nation's favourite son in Lithuania's beloved sport, basketball. Sabonis, who was born in Kaunas but whose talent thrilled fans everywhere, said that he owed all of his success to the club where he grew up, Shalgiris. Dignitaries from the Lithuanian government and the world of basketball, including Euroleague president and CEO Mr. Jordi Bertomeu, added their words of praise for Sabonis and his club before the night was made complete, the way Shalgiris fans have come to expect over 70 years with a great basketball victory. This year's squad, wearing throwback uniforms and led by team captain Paulius Jankunas, went out and did the club's history proud by defeating fellow Euroleague team Panathinaikos Athens in a great tribute to the players who came before them and an auspicious prelude to the upcoming Euroleague season in Kaunas and beyond.